Okay, so today we are talking about trig form of a complex number. My projector will turn on. Okay, so we can graph numbers in the form a plus bi. So these are imaginary numbers, remember? The a part is real, the bi is imaginary. So just like a normal coordinate plane, the real axis is the a value. The imaginary axis is the b value with the i. Okay, so remember, this is how you write an imaginary number. You can also rewrite it as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. This i is imaginary because it's not bolded. Then I also have these formulas where A is R cosine theta, B is R sine theta, and R is the radius. So you just find the square root of A squared plus B squared. And if I need to find my angle, tangent of theta is my B value over my A value. So number one wants me to write the complex number in trigonometric form. The first thing I want to do is I want to figure out my r value. So my a value here is 0 because I don't have a real part to this number. My b value is negative 2. So then I'm plugging into this r equals, I'm going to have 0 squared plus 2 squared. So if I go ahead and, oh, that was negative 2 actually. So this gives me I'm looking for an answer here. Two. Then I want to go ahead and put this into trigonometric form. So the first thing I highlighted. Oh wait, before I can do that, I need to figure out my angle. So I need to do tangent theta, my B value over my A value. Where is, well, what is the simplified to? No, because my zero is on the bottom. Yeah, undefined. So where is tangent undefined? Do you remember? Where is tangent undefined? Not a quadrant, an angle. Um, I don't have this person. I don't even know who they are. Sorry, that's what's happening now. So remember, where is the white out? OK, 
Okay, so remember this chart? Okay, remember, tangent is always my y value over my x value. Where on this graph will I get undefined? Pi halves and three pi halves, right? Those are my only two options because they both have y at zero. I need to decide which one is the right one. So just like on this axis up above, just like a normal axis, the real numbers are positive right here. The imaginary numbers are positive right here. Real numbers are negative here. And imaginary are negative down there. So if I'm looking for a negative 2, which of my two choices, pi halves and 3 pi halves, would give me a negative 2? Three pi halves. Now that I have my angle, I just want to go ahead and plug it in. And then this is my final answer, because now it has trig equations. Yeah, so just like on a normal number plane, the imaginary axis is positive up here, and it's negative down here. The number I was specifically looking at is negative 2i. So that means negative 2 imaginary. So that's why I picked the negative, or the 3 pi halves, because that's what made it negative. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on number 1? for when it asks for it in trigonometric form, yeah. So, look at this imaginary axis, right? Wait, it's negative 2i, Natalie. Oh, okay. Okay. So number 2 is similar, except now I have an a value. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to find my R value. So let me know when you get a value for this. Mm -hmm. Then on this one, before I actually go ahead and find my angle, I'm going to plot this on a graph. You're just typing it in the calculator. Um, so if I wanted to graph this, negative 2 is my real number, so I'm going to go left 2. And then my imaginary number is also negative, so I'd go down. This is going to be in which quadrant? Third quadrant. So I want to pay attention to that when I go ahead and get my angle. So I want to go do tangent of theta equals my b value over my a value. So that's going to be negative 2 square root of 3 over negative 2.
Okay, so this simplifies to just square root of 3. Where does tangent equal square root of 3? Five-thirds. Okay, but this is in the fourth quadrant. So to get pi-thirds in the fourth quadrant, I add two pi. Which gives me four pi-thirds. Yeah, that's what I said. You add pi to my angle. Did I say two pi? Oh, I meant one pi. I meant 1 pi, because this is going back to this idea. Mm -hmm. Third, because I graphed it. So the negative 2 out front tells me to go left 2, and the negative 2 red 3 tells me to go down. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like coordinate points, where if they're both negative, it's the third. Okay, then I just want to go ahead and plug into my formula. So I'm going to have z equals what? Mm -hmm. Parentheses. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. So this next one wants me to write the complex number in standard form. This one is literally just evaluating it. So what is cosine of negative pi thirds? Pi thirds? No. <laughs> you were close. <laughs> Oh, it's not like it. Yeah. On the chart. What's pi thirds? Good question. No, I mean like the yeah, one half. So if I am negative pi thirds is right here. Is cosine positive or negative there? Cosine? Cosine is positive there, so it's going to be positive one half. What about sine of pi thirds? Negative pi thirds, I mean. No. Is it radical 2 over 2? No. Square root of 3 over 2. Is this one positive or negative? Is sine positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? Okay, so then I just need to go ahead and distribute that square root of 8. Actually, before I distribute it, I want to simplify it. What is square root of 8 simplified? Um, two, two square root of 2. Because remember, if I did the factor tree, it's 2, 4, 2, and 2. So a pair of 2s goes on the outside, and one stays inside. Okay, then I want to go ahead and distribute. So 2 square root of 2 times 1 half is just radical 2. 2 square root of 2 times negative square root of 3 over 2i. So first things first, I know it's going to be negative. 
radical 6, and then an i, and this is my answer. Negative pi thirds is quadrant 4. You remember when we used to graph and it'd go like this if I was negative? So negative pi thirds is less than negative pi halves, so it put it in the fourth quadrant. Any other questions here? Okay. I'm going to skip going over number six with you guys. That's just the practice. This next one is the product of two complex numbers is... I multiply my two numbers out front, and I add my angles. And then evaluate. So, if I take a look at number 7, the first thing I'm going to do is take my two numbers out front and multiply. So, I'm going to do 3 times 2. Then I'm going to write cosine of pi force plus 3 pi force because I took the angle from the first one and I added to the angle of the second one. Then I have plus i sine, same deal, pi force plus 3 pi force. Yes, you'll have these formulas on the test. Okay, so 3 times 2 is, and then I have cosine of what? What's pi force plus 3 pi force? Just pi? Okay. So then I actually want to figure out what these are at pi. Remember, pi is the one where I have to use this one. So what's cosine of pi? And then sine of pi. Yeah, zero. Okay, then how would you like me to simplify this? Okay, so I have negative six plus zero i. Do I need to write the zero i? No. I just write the negative six. When it's imaginary, I can just ignore it if it's a zero. Okay, questions on number seven. right side. No, no, because I added the two angles together. Because it said find the product. So I used this formula where I added the two angles together. And that's where the pi force went. Okay, so I'm going to move on to number eight. It's the same idea. So then I'm going to take my two outside numbers and multiply. So I have two times eight. Then inside, I'm going to add my angles. I'm adding 2 pi thirds and 11 pi six.
15 pi 6. Does that simplify? It simplifies. That's why I was asking. 5 pi halves. Yeah. So where is 5 pi halves? No. 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 It's on a line. The pi halves? No. Pi halves. So remember, if I have 5 pi halves and I subtract 2 pi, it gives me pi halves. A complete circle. So, like, if I went around this completely, 2 pi, and then pi halves. It's 5 pi halves. So now that I know where 5 pi halves is, what is cosine there? No. Zero. Remember, it's my x value there. And then sine of 5 pi halves? eyes. Out of context, that sounds really weird. <laughs> okay, so then what do I want to do next? Okay, so that's going to give me 0 plus 16i. And then my final answer is just questions here. Okay, so then we're just going to move on to number 11. Does anyone still need this one up? Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is Dermov serum. If I have a number written in this form, then I can use it to find the power. So if something's raised to an exponent, by using r to the power times cosine of the power times my angle plus i sine the power times my angle. So number 11 wants me to find this number to the 12th power. I have to turn it into trigonometric form first. So this is what we were doing on the first few problems. I want to find my radius, so my a here is 1, my b is the square root of 3. So I'm going to plug that in. I have the square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. Two. Then to find my angle, I'm going to do the square root of 3 over 1, and then I'm also going to plot this to see where it is. My a value is positive, and my b value is positive, so it's in the first quadrant. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to plug this in. This is going to be... Uh, What am I doing? So I have 2 on the outside, cosine pi thirds, plus i sine pi thirds. 
Now that I have this in trigonometric form, this part is really replacing this inside right here. So it's still raised to the 12th power. So now I can use my formula. I'm going to have 2 to the 12th power times cosine of 12 times pi thirds plus i sine of 12 times pi thirds. Okay, so what is 2 to the 12th power? Why is that scary? You just... Eh. Okay, then what is 12 times pi thirds? 4 pi? Ooh, that last pi looks ugly. <laughs> No, we're almost done. What's cosine of 4 pi? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then sine of 4 pi? Zero. Mm-hmm. Because remember, this is zero pi halves pi, 3 pi halves, 2 pi. If I go around a complete circle, it's 2 pi. If I go around again, it's 4 pi. Yeah, so remember, a complete circle is 2 pi. And if I do it a second time, I go around another 2 pi. 2 pi plus 2 pi is 4 pi. The difference between what? I'm sorry. Because remember, cosine is the x value and sine is the y value. Sam, did you have a question? Okay. Am I done yet? Okay. Mm -hmm. No, because it's got a zero. Mm -hmm. 